Hi, I want to take just a couple of minutes to share a little bit about what we're doing and introduce the next project. I want to emphasize we are continuing to examine that intersection between language and communication and our identity. And I have a reading for you that you can explore that. You can think about how you're conveying your identity in your blogs. Along those lines, I wanna go back to James Paul G's quote that we opened the semester with. Anytime we're using language, we're engaged in saying, writing, doing, believing, being, valuing, believing combinations which integrate words, acts, values, all of these things. You know a little bit about me by the way I gesture. You know a little bit about me by the vocabulary I choose, the tone of my voice. If you could actually see me, um, if we were in person, you would see the way I dress, the way I walk, all of these say a lot about who I am. And as we develop that awareness, we can think about how we convey ourselves to others. Because we are going to take on different roles as we leave the university. Now, this isn't about creating a mask the best identities are authentic. And so you really do wanna be yourself, but that awareness helps us fit into different situations. I use some vocabulary when, when, I'm, when, I'm, with, when I'm with my colleagues, other vocabularies when I'm with my students or the tutors in the writing center and with my friends or with children, not that my friends are children, but you get the idea. We are always adapting to the audience we with, are with. And yet at some level, we are who we are. And even when we are adapting, we need to be who we are. Um, this is about building ethos. And so certain aspects of our identity show that we are knowledgeable. If we talk about some things, we can seem like we share our audience's values. We can establish common ground. We can include comments, phrases that show our concern for their audience. We can talk about things in such a way to show that we have really considered more than one side of an issue, that we're objective. All of these things are building ethos, not just citing a text or showing how smart we are. Um, ethos is trustworthiness. And we do that a lot of ways. Now, part of RWS is exposing you to new types of writing, writing that you might not normally do. And so I'm gonna introduce some genres, some styles of writing you're probably not familiar with. Now, in your life outside the university, you're gonna develop new styles of writing. But of course, I cannot possibly teach you all those styles of writing. We have 30 students in this class and all of you have different goals and aspirations and we can't touch on all 30 of your needs. But by exposing you to styles of writing that you're not already familiar with, I can help you develop strategies for learning new styles. This is about writing rhetorically about adapting to audience and purpose, which brings us back to E. Shelley Reed. And I want you to think about all of those things from E. Shelley Reed's article as we move forward, whether it's paragraph length or providing explanation so we don't assume that our readers know what we're talking about when we haven't actually explained ourselves. All of these things matter. Now, as we continue that, your next project is a poem. And yes, that is exactly how I feel with poetry. It's like, are you kidding? Um, and that's exactly why I chose to have you write a poem is because I'm assuming most of you don't write poetry on a regular basis. And so you're gonna need some strategies for learning how to write a poem. And so the strategy that I'm giving you is the use of a mentor text. Now we know what mentors are. They are people that come alongside us, that guide us as we're learning something new. 
But a mentor text is a text that does that same function. So if we were with a mentor, we would watch that mentor engage in certain projects. We would ask questions. We would look at what they do, what they don't do, how they interact with people. And then we would begin to do some of those same things. I like to think of the idea of mentor dancing. When I introduce this concept, I am not a dancer. I love music, but I never learned how to dance. And so if I'm at a party and there is dancing and the music's good and I'm with people I'm comfortable with, I will get out on the dance floor. But what I will do is I will find somebody and they normally don't know that I'm doing this. I will watch what they do and I will start doing some of the same things. Now I probably look crazy and that's okay. Remember, I'm with people I'm comfortable with but I'm having a good time and I'm dancing. If I did that often enough, I would probably learn how to dance, but well, that's a whole other story. That's how you're using a mentor text. You're gonna watch, examine the text, analyze the structure. What is the author doing? This isn't necessarily what the author's saying, but it's structures, patterns, the way they use evidence, the way they organize paragraph, the way they organize lines. And then you're gonna adapt those patterns and that structure to fit your topic and your purpose. And you're gonna start with a poem. That's all I've got, you can get started.